Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And onto the theme of using our Linux systems for real production, I'm going to talk today about the five packages I use in my author business. So I write books and those books get published across the global distribution. They get published as ebooks, audiobooks, and print books. You can pick them up anywhere where you uh, get books. And um, what I do is I entirely write these and submit these from Linux operating systems. So what tools do I use to make that happen? That's what we're gonna be looking at here today. Now of note, this is not applying just to Linux. Every one of these tools is actually cross-platform. So whether you are on Windows, or Linux or Mac, if you're interested in writing and producing your own books, these software packages can actually be used everywhere, but I personally use them on Linux. Number one, LibreOffice, particularly LibreWriter is what I use. Now, there are other packages that you can probably use equally well. Uh, we have WPS Office. There's, um, uh, there's a few other ones out there. There's a pile of, of these tools. I personally use LibreWriter because it has, it has the most compatibility, I think. Uh, it has the uh, most robust community behind it and is definitely the, the leader in the open source um, open source um, world with regards to our office packages. Now, of course, this is a free download. You can head on over to LibreOffice.org and download this. And uh, you can use it to, of course, I don't just type up the manuscripts. I use it for all of the formatting. Now, why don't I use LaTeX? Well, I've been experimenting and looking into LaTeX, but frankly, I still think that LibreWriter is the better option at this point in time. Uh, just because of the process in writing, the way you import and export text, the other things that we're going to be talking about here, there's just things that make LibreWriter a little bit better option, including things like spell checkers and stuff like that that are integrated into it. So definitely have a look at LibreWriter for all of your needs, um, referencing your uh, footnotes, your endnotes, your formatting, your book formatting, all these types of things. You can do all of these on a Linux or other operating system with LibreWriter. Number two, every book needs to have a cover. Your audiobooks need covers, your ebooks need covers, and what better to use than GIMP? cross-platform system that will definitely hold its water next to Photoshop. And this one here is free and open source and is also cross-platform. So you can find this one at GIMP.org. So GIMP is what I use to do all of my cover designs. You can do you know multi-layered things. You can do everything you can do in Photoshop. You can do inside of GIMP. You can produce your book covers. You can produce your ebook covers, your audiobook covers, even your internal images that you might need, maybe your graphics, whatever you need inside your book, whether they be the ebooks or the print books. You can design all these, work with these within the GIMP prep uh, application. Again, cross-platform, you can just head on up to the download button and you can find out how to install it on a variety of different systems. So they do have the flat packs. If you're interested in that, you can find it inside of your repositories. And then there's OS X and Microsoft Windows editions as well. There might even be some for some other ones as well. So you can uh, head on over there for uh, information on using GIMP. And of course, you will need to consult some tutorials. Building cover designs is always complicated. Um, so you're not going to pull this open and just immediately be great at it. But this is what I use, and it works very well. Number three, when you need to get your ebooks out, Sigil. Sigil, that might be spelled, pronouncing that incorrectly. Maybe it's Sigil. I don't know. Whatever it happens to be, it's spelled S I G I L. It is a cross platform ebook generator. So, what I do with this guy is when I have my Libre Writer document ready to go, I hit the export as ebook. I separate it out by my H1 tags inside my 
uh, inside my document, and then that's going to create a basic ebook file, but that is not what you want to distribute. You're gonna open up that file inside of this application, and then you're going to clean up the code, you're going to make sure everything is set right, you're going to add your styles, you're gonna add your front cover, you're gonna add your metadata, and then you're going to save that as your ebook, and this is what will get distributed out. Want to make sure that you run through an EPUB validator, make sure it's working. Now, a little warning note, I used to also use Calibri because the metadata was a lot easier to add inside of that. I stopped using Calibri because it turns out that Calibri does something to the code that I have not yet been able to figure out, but it breaks the nav menus on iOS devices. And I thought it was just iOS devices, but it seems to be something with Calibri. Because if I take my ebook and I, uh, I export my, my book uh, inside of this and I run it through my validator, everything validates perfectly and it works perfectly on iOS. But if I take the book and then run it through Calibri, add my metadata, and then save that and export it, it still validates, but the menus do not work on Apple devices for some reason. I don't know what that reason happens to be, but it seems to be something related to using Calibri. This is why you definitely stick with Sigil and you make sure that your uh, you make sure that all of your metadata is inserted. You have to have your metadata um, just to make sure everything is all kosher, make sure people can find your book uh, when they're putting it on their individual devices. You need to make sure it's validated. Sigil will do all this kind of stuff. I've never had something that comes out of Sigil that I say, this is a final product that I actually had to go into my validator and correct. So uh, you can actually come on over here to their main site. It's sigil-ebook.com and uh, you can come on down here, read about the various things. And then there is, I think it's under the get is where you download it. So you can grab your binaries. Um, you can actually find it inside of your, uh, inside of your individual platform. And there's uh, links for, uh, there are links for the, the ebook or the, the application on Windows and Mac somewhere around here as well. It is definitely a cross platform system. So this is what I'm using to make my ebooks. Number four, when you need to get your audiobooks produced, you need to go into Audacity. Audacity, easy cross-platform system that will enable you to record and edit and produce your audiobooks. Um, I use Audacity for doing all my audiobook production. There are a few extra plugins that you need to install. Um, I think I have a video about those uh, on, the, on the channel. I'll go ahead and card that here and put it in the description down below. And so uh, utilizing Audacity, I actually record my audiobooks in office in the studio. And then I go through and produce them on Audacity and then I export them. And what you want to use is you want to make sure that you're using ACX standard. Uh, even if you're not distributing through ACX, all of the audiobook distributors require the same distribution standards, which are all set by ACX. So you can have a look at either, you know, any of the distributor platforms to see what information you need to do that. And so Audacity is what I use. You can record it, you can edit it, you can export it. The only thing Audacity doesn't do all that well is they don't really work well with tags. And so we will be talking about our tagging as our last application. Number five, I use KID3 for all of my tagging. So this supports uh, all of the different types of tagging that you need. I think is it like I think it's 1.1 and two, version two. So there's different types of MP3 tags you want to do. Now there are definitely like all of these points. There are other applications that can do this as well. This is just the one that I found works best for me and my situation. So utilizing uh, utilizing this, you can grab um, you can grab your Kid Three from your individual distribution on Linux. There are actually downloads on their website as well. They are at kid3.sourceforge.io, and then uh, you can actually see what all they do. They'll edit your different tags. You can copy from one tag to the other. You can add your images. All the different types of things that you want to have for good, proper, clean tags for your audiobooks, so your end users can uh, understand which file they're reading, what part of it is. All of that is inside of Kid Three. 
And then of course you can come on down to download. You can uh, install it from your different repositories. And there's the, here's the DMG, the Android. Oh, I didn't know they had an Android package, but apparently they do. Uh, and they have the, the Linux or the Windows one here as well. So you have all of these different platforms inside of KID3. All these applications work great. They are very easy to use and they will enable you to do all of the different steps that you need to do for writing. So that's it. Write in a word processor. I use Libre Writer. Produce your, your cover art. I use GIMP. There's uh, Sigil for your eBooks and um, Audacity and Kid3 for your audiobooks. So those are the tools that I use personally in producing all of my books to go out to the local uh, to all the different global distribution networks. So uh, hopefully this will be helpful to you, particularly if you are an author or thinking about being an author. If you want more tips and tricks about that, get a hold of me and we can uh, talk further. So thanks for coming along. Have a look at the links up above me or in the description down below and follow along on the social media if you want to learn more about the channel.